at the shores of Lake Victoria, where the third interministerial meeting is going on. Five delegates from five countries are meeting here at Munyonyo, of course, to talk about uh, ending the vice of the female genital mutilation. Uh, well, that informs you that uh, two other meetings have taken place. Well, the first one was in, held in Mombasa. And from that we are going here, I'm going to be joined by one of the experts who will tell us what milestones we have achieved in ending the, this vice. And of course we, we understand there has been a challenge in the last two years since the outbreak of the COVID-19. But all that we are going to understand. A uh, very good afternoon. And of course we have been meeting here for yesterday and today when this meeting is ending. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe if you briefly could tell us why are these meetings important? This is the third. Uh, my name is Bernadette Loloju. I'm the Chief Executive Officer of the Anti-Female Genital Mutilation Board Kenya. And I'm um, here to represent uh, my country, Kenya. I just want to say that this journey started in Nogadugu, Burkina Faso, where we made a decision to have a cross-border uh, engagement among uh, five countries, that is Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, Ethiopia, and Somalia. And we had our first meeting in Mombasa, Kenya, where all the ministers of the region met and made a declaration to end cross-border FGM. And what came out of that meeting is that we had to work on a costed cro uh, cross-border action plan that can be used to implement the activities across the borders to make sure that we reduce FGM. What you need to take note of is that the countries are at different levels when it comes to prevalence of FGM within the countries. And another thing you need to take note of is that Kenya is at the central point and it's bordering of the other four countries. That means that uh, we have to work very, very hard to make sure that we end cross-border FGM. Why cross-border FGM? Because uh, our communities now, because there's no policy at the East African level like controlling all of us, so now people move from one country to another to run away from uh, prosecution. So uh, why are we here? Because we want to make sure that we have a policy that can, an, uh, an act that can be used across all the mm. countries that is, um, that is uh, more like the same for everyone so that we don't have people crossing over. Then we are also here to recommit ourselves to the Mombasa Declaration. And then number three, we are here for the ministers to commit to implement the cross-border action plan that they launched on that November 2021. Our viewers would, want, would like to understand the milestones that have been achieved since the first meeting. So the milestones that have been achieved is that now we have a costed action plan in place and it has been launched. We also have a research that was done for the five countries for the, if, uh, what the communities are doing at that level. The research was on cross-border uh, FGM at community level. It was also launched on that November. We also have some countries that have put policies and strategies is in place and we have like a country like Kenya since that time we have um we have uh, a presidential commitment to end FGM by 2022. Mm -hmm. So a lot has been done within that period and we are here again to recommit and focus on our way forward. Mm. We understand that the prevalence rate in Somalia is still very high, uh, understandably at 98%. Why so? Because if you have been having these meetings and you know globally there has been advocacy for ending FGM, why is the prevalence rate still high in that country? We know that um, the Somalis connect FGM to religion. So they believe it's a religious requirement for you to go through female genital mutilation. And we all know that Somalia is 100% Islamic community. So if it's a religious requirement, then that means everyone in that community is doing FGM. In fact, it's not 98%, it's 99.9%. So it's still very high because it's a religious, according to them, it's a religious requirement. But the day they delink religion from female genital mutilation, they will just go from 99 to zero because it will be across the, the, the whole country. Okay, thank you very much for speaking to us. Of course, uh, resolutions will be made from this meeting and uh, we shall be letting you, our viewers, later on in the evening on what could have been agreed on and how this will help to end the vice. Back to you in studio.